I initially went into pageantry just because I was very low in self-confidence. I was bullied, you know, being African in America is not easy. What's life like after the crown? You know, you pass it off and you know, you're doing big things, I'm sure. What's life like after? Honestly, the work just started. To me, the crown was given to me when I was born because I'm a child of God first. What's up, it's your girl Omise with Afrovage, and I am sitting here with the beautiful Tosin, the former Miss Nigeria USA. <laughs> Miss Nigeria USA, that's huge. Tell us your journey and how did you, what was it like? Well, I started off in pageantry at 17. Um, I initially went into pageantry just because I was very low in self-confidence. I was bullied, you know, being African in America is not easy. So I went into it just thinking it's gonna be fun, but I didn't realize how much pageantry really has changed my life. So now that I was Miss Nigeria USA, I was able to use my platform to be a woman empowerment advocate, as well as advocate for breast health and many different things. So I was very happy for the platform and things I've done after the platform as well. Wow, I didn't know your journey started off being bullied. Yeah. Um, so. Did those bullies see you and see your title? What happened afterwards when they I saw how beautiful you become? And some of the them crown? are in my DMs now. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, I think my story is just a story of grace. You know, God really blessed me and put me through this journey to put me in this position now. I feel everything I've been through is preparing me for the next level of life. So do I, am, am I upset that I was bullied? No, I'm actually happy because it made me the woman that I am today. What do you value most about being an African? Hmm, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Until about college, I didn't value being Nigerian as much. Now, I love being Nigerian. When I was younger, I think I think every Amer American Nigerian or Nigerian American goes through a phase where they want to fit in. So you want to cut down your name, you want to, you know, fit in with your uh, Akata friends. But now, I say my full name. I mean, some people call me Tosi or Ola, but Olua Tosi, that's my full name. I'm proud. It means God is worthy to be worshipped. And I think we need to, as Nigerians, be proud of our culture. It wasn't until about college and I started going to different Nigerian mixes. And I actually went to a Waste Kid concert in 2012 with my sister. It, where was that? In New York? It was in New York. Changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Waste Kid. Waste Kid changed your life. Changed your life. No, with the music. Changed my life. Oh, God changed my life. Okay, but I just. <laughs> His energy, you know, him just coming from humble beginnings mm -hmm. and now look at him now, like on on track with Drake and just him just being a pillar in Nigerian music, mm -hmm. I, I would say after Fela. So definitely that just made me like, okay, if he can do that, what can I do? I can't sing really, but what I can do is promote my culture. I can be an advocate for different causes. So that's why I got into the platform. Um, how does that make you feel when you hear these negative stuff about our, our country, not alone the whole continent? Yeah, I mean, obviously it makes me angry like any other person, but then I think it's our duty as first and second generation Nigerians and Africans in general to show the beauty of Africa. Um, don't leave it up to the Western world to depict Africa. We need to do something about that. That's why I always try, especially when I go to Nigeria, show people the difference, like sceneries and Snapchat. You know, I have a lot of white friends. I have a lot of, you know, Spanish friends and they're able to be like, oh wow, that's Africa, where you at? And I'm just like, this is Nigeria. Now, if you're hearing shithole and then you see that, you're like, okay, there's obviously, uh, you know, a lie. I think we need to also promote the good. You know, there are Nigerian scholars. Like, do you know Nigerians are one of the most educated in America, not just in probably actually worldwide. You know, we cannot eliminate the negatives of Nigeria, but we can at least promote the positive and be a part of that change. Would you feel like that all of us, in a way, are ambassadors of our Nigeria, of ambassadors of Africa, especially if we live here? Yeah. Um, would you Would you agree with that? I would say yeah. I would say we sh we should all be ambassadors, regardless if you're a Miss Nigeria USA or just a regular Nigerian, you need to promote pe you know, your culture. What's life like after the crown? You know, you pass it off and you know, you're doing big things, I'm sure. What's life like after? 
Honestly, I thought it was going to be a little bit boring because I'm like, okay, crown is off. But honestly, the work just started after um, I was able to be in different magazines, fashion, as well as do um, hosting different things. I'm really an advocate for women empowerment. So I was able to actually host the 2017 Women Work Gala in New York. Yes. Um, it was at NYU. It was a beautiful event. Um, I've done so much, honestly, and now I'm going to take it back home. Definitely a Nigeria business trip coming soon. Okay. Um, I just, regardless of me having a crown and not I say with or without a crown I'm a queen I love that just be humble and be yeah. happy yeah. I love that you said you're a queen before the crown yeah. meaning even if you don't have a crown doesn't mean you should not be able to promote Nigeria yeah. in the way that you do even bigger and better yeah like people need to look at people like you and thank be motivated you. because you. like you said it's not the crown that makes a queen it's you thank you so much thank for being you. with us thank you thank you